Um, injuries from yesterday. Um, we got more with the stinger. He's day to day. Uh, Witherspoon ankle day to day. Uh, Marsh came in this morning with um, concussion symptoms, so he'll um, he was placed in the protocol this morning. Uh, and Zacha uh, growing. We'll recheck him on Wednesday. Um, and uh, Malcolm Smith, same thing, Achilles soreness. Um, Pierre, uh, we're going to get him scoped tomorrow, so he'll go on IR sometime this week. Um, Brita, ankle, recheck him on Wednesday. Tart, Stinger, same thing on Wednesday. And K1 with his knee, we'll recheck on Wednesday. Garcon will go on IR later yes. this week. Yeah. Have you spoken to Pierre about his future, what he plans to do? He's getting up there in age, obviously. Um, I know he plans to play. Yeah. We're just uh, tweeting right now. So. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I can hear it. Uh, give you guys a five second rule and I'm out of here. He's going to go undergo arthroscopic knee surgery. He's getting his knee scoped. Is that the same thing? That's the same procedure. All right. Yeah, I mean, you need him to say that on the record? Like, well, no, I just want to, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Neither am I. That's why I struggled with that question. <laughs> yeah, but you have doctors who, who tell you. That's true, and they told me <laughs> it is getting scoped. <laughs> so. Kendrick's been filling in now for, you know, four or five weeks at mm -hmm. that spot. Just what, what's his progress been like, uh, you know, in a starring role? Um, the same thing that he did last year. You know, I mean, he, it was the same role he did last year. I know Lou Murphy started the games, but it was the same amount of plays and stuff like that. Um, he is, you know, born stepped in and done a good job. Um, I want him to be more consistent and continue to get better. Um, Keys came in and split time with him yesterday at the Z position also. Um, but no, Bourne's made some plays for us this year. What was your approach with, with Marquise yesterday? Um, we, you know, it was what I said earlier in the week. We were going to feel it out as the week went. I thought he had a very good week of practice. It got better, especially as the week went. Um, you know, and he, you know, he didn't work at Z all week, but he was comfortable with it. Keese understands our offense pretty well. So just talking to him Saturday night and seeing where he was at, we told him if he felt good with it, we were going to throw him in at Z a little bit more so we could leave Dante on the field a little bit longer. And he was up for the challenge and did a real good job in there. Dante was saying after the game that he's, these last few games he's felt a lot more comfortable because of those extra reps. Is that kind of the goal going forward? Just like there's some rookie mistakes here and there, but that get those out of the way right now. Yeah, that's that's definitely the plan right now. I, I think um, you know it started in Tampa, but that's something I'm just realizing as coaches. It's you know Dante, we haven't been ready to throw him out there a ton because um, he's shown he's not 100% fully ready to handle that. And um, but what it's been neat to watch him is when we didn't have a choice and we had to throw him out there, and that uh, he did some things that he wasn't ready for that we anticipated. But by going through it, uh, he got better as the game went with it. And you know he made some mistakes in Tampa the first quarter that he was better at in the second quarter, and uh, got him some experience that he needs. And I thought he was better in Seattle after that, and just being out there playing more. He is a very smart guy who. Um, who listens and understands what you're saying, but you always got to put athletes kind of through those situations so they can feel it themselves. And he has, and it's gotten better from it. Two of your veteran guys on defense, Malcolm Smith and, and Earl, didn't play any snaps at all of defense. Yeah. Are, are you just kind of wanting to see the, the young guys like Elijah Lee and DJ Jones? Is that kind of the idea yeah. to get them out there and kind of play these young guys? I mean, you would like to, but that's not, I mean, it's got to take more than that. You know, and those guys in, in particular, you know, Earl, Earl's, I think, had a very good year. You know, I think Earl's, I think Earl's been better this year than last year. And I think Earl played good last year. Um, it's very hard to get a number of noses up on game day. And so having Earl up throughout the year is why DJ hasn't been up very much. And, um, you know, if Earl ever fell off and, you know, DJ was doing a lot better, we would have made that change. But Earl's played well throughout the year. Um, but it came a time, and, you know, I had to sit Earl down and tell him it was nothing against him, but um, we need to see what DJ can do. Um, Earl's done well throughout this year, but in order to get DJ some playing time, um, we told Earl that he was probably going to have to sit down. Um, and then when K1, you know, we worked him out before the game and um, K1 couldn't go. Um, that allowed us to have an extra one up, so we got Earl up, but didn't expect him to play um, unless there was an injury. And then when it came to Malcolm, you know, I think you guys are aware of what Malcolm's been battling all year. Um, that's why he has been coming out a lot during games, um, regardless of who's in, just because it's tough for him to play for four quarters. Um, we thought it would get better over the bye week after we did some things. 
Um, it hasn't. And he came to us um, a couple days before the game saying he was really struggling to get through it. And we agreed with him. So we went into it um, starting Elijah for that reason. And we were ready to bring Malcolm in if need be. Um, but Elijah handled it very well and um, did a good job. So nothing happened. These are, these are coaching decisions, Kyle. But does, what kind of say does John have with you as you try to map out the roster and evaluate it? Every, I mean, we talk about everything, yeah, definitely. You talked about making hard personal decisions in the offseason, but guys like that, Earl and Malcolm and Pierre, they're you know, 30 or a little over 30 or whatever, a little more expensive. I mean, are those guys you're talking about you have to figure out does it make sense to have them on the team next Yeah, year? I mean, those guys understand the business, and, and they understand how it works, and that's stuff that you don't ignore. I, that's why I, you guys are asking the questions. So it's, I mean, it's obvious. I talked to that with those guys, and, um, you know, those guys aren't done. You know, and what one guy, you know, in particular, what I said with Earl, you know, that was, he's played very well this year. So there's fo- a lot of football left in him. You know, Malcolm and Pierre are battling through injuries that are legit injuries that have lingered all year. Um, what you would like to as a coaching staff or even a personnel department, you'd love for them to get healthy and then to let them go out there and play so you can truly judge them. Because they are getting older, yes, but um, they do still have some good football in them if they're healthy. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to get healthy throughout this year. We've waited on Pierre for a bit. We had some very, it was going very positive for a while. That's why we felt real good about it. Um, but it came back from that bye week and it, it had gotten worse. And we tried our hardest last week. He went out and went full go Wednesday. Swelled up on him, caused him a lot of pain. And after having that same thing through almost most of the year, especially it was the week before the Green Bay game that it really started coming. Um, it, it was just lingering too long where P knew he had to get something done, a scope. Um, so we had to shut him down. Now, uh, I saw P in training camp when his knee wasn't bothering him. He was playing at a high level. Um, it's very hard to do that when you're not healthy, especially the age these are, guys are at. Um, Hopefully they can get healthy this off season, and then you, you got to make decisions. You don't just get rid of people to get rid of people. I mean, they're all good players, good people, people we love here. Um, but you're always trying to improve and get better, and that's what we see. What, what, what's the competition you cre- can create? What are the options out there? Will you have competition this week to, for that fill that spot moving up, or have you already informed whoever is going to? No, be we there? haven't. You know, um, we're not sure exactly when we're going to do it to be to make it official. We'll do it sometime this week. Um, but no, we don't know exactly what directions we're going to go. We have a number of options. So you had mentioned Dunbar uh, suffering a, a hamstring strain a few weeks ago. Yeah. How, how has he been recently? Good. He was back at practice all last week, so he was able to put in a full week of practice. Hamstrings linger a little bit, but once you're good enough to practice, at, at least he was healthy enough to be out there and expecting to be better this week. Do you have any idea? I, I forget if you just said it, but K one's injury. Do you know the, the prognosis of that? I don't. I, I um. You know, it's, it, I think it happened a little bit in the game last week. It acted up in practice. Um, it was definitely something he felt good about early in the week. Um, and then it, I forget whether it was Thursday or Wednesday, but it bothered him. So we held him out on one of the practices and um, thought it would clear up and get the swelling down by Sunday, but it, it wasn't. And he tried to go and work out, but it was too much pain. So hopefully he'll be good this week. Did DJ play well enough to make you consider giving him another start there in the spot, regardless of, of K1's health? Uh, I want to say regardless. You know, K1's played at a very high level this year and done a good job. And I want to say just one game of DJ Reed that he fully played better than him. But DJ did have a very good game. I was very excited to see him do some of the stuff he did as the nickel. Um, I think K1's done a hell of a job for us in these two years. So um, I, you know, if. If K1's healthy, I expect K1 to be out there. Um, but if he's not, DJ hopefully can get better than he did last week. And it'd be great to go in with some real good competition with those two next year. DJ talked about, after the game yesterday, his ability to just play faster at that spot because it's closer to what he did in college. Did you see him playing significantly faster and having to think less than when he was playing for Yes, before? definitely. It's, I mean, it's what he has more experience at. and. And there's less to do there. I mean, you're, you're on the you're, you're lined up over the same guy the entire game, and there's not a lot of different stuff that you do. So it's it's an easier spot, and um, you know definitely less pressure on him, especially as a rookie. And he has more experience at it. And DJ wants to run, play free, and hit, and he does that very well. And it showed up yesterday. We were talking about uh, Nick last night about just how it was throwing to Kittle, and he said he was open so often. And he said all the receivers were open, and he credited you for it. When you went over the film today, did it look as open as you thought it was? Um, a lot of stuff in the first half. 
Um, you know, what I mean, especially the one, you know, the one they're talking about, the one Kittle was really open. You know, that's a play action where you insert in the middle of the line, and it's tough for the guy who has them to decide whether to run fit or cover. Um, so that's how you get someone all alone. But you know, they do they do a ton of man coverage. So um, I was able to get some guys and some good looks. Um, and then the ones we had in the second half, you know, we didn't have nearly as many. Um, but when we did have them, um, we got to make the catch. Will you guys have an opportunity to get Contavious Street out there to practice? Yes, yeah, something's coming up this week. I don't know the exact details on it, but he should have an option to practice here. Um, he won't be playing in the games, but we can have him out on the practice field soon. Would it be, you might practice him this week? I believe so. I to think so and believe so. So yeah, it sounds like it sounds like, it sounds like you know. That's probably why you asked. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't. I don't. I don't know if that's this Wednesday or next Wednesday. But as soon as he can. You know, he's ready to go. He's been working his tail off with Ray. He's lifting too many weights, but no, he should be big. You can't lift too many. Um, but no, we're excited to get him out there, and hopefully he'll be good this week. I like at the end of the game there, uh, Trent Taylor and Dante got some redemption from miscues to previous possessions. Is that big for you know a young receiver just to be able to be able to rebound re real quickly and flush the mistakes? Um, I hope so, because, I mean, they, they were very, very big drops. You know, we didn't. I think we had five possessions in the second half. We didn't convert a third down until our fifth one, you know, and our uh, the final one. And on that, we converted two third downs, which allowed us to finish the game. So um, it's tough to get going when we didn't convert those third downs early. And um, there were two drops that I thought we should have got it. And I know those guys should have too. So they were big ones. And um, fortunately, the D held up. That gave them a chance to redeem themselves. And um, Trent had the big third down that sealed it. Uh, Philosophy-wise, I mean, do, do you have a stance on, you know, running back fumbles, give it to him right again and make him forget about it, or sit for a series, think about it. I mean, is that just case by case? Case by case. You know, it's, um, you know, sometimes benching a guy to make him think about it. If if, if I thought that helped a guy, I hoped I hope we would have given that urgency before the game started, not that we had to, to bench him to get him to realize that holding onto the ball is important. So I, I think uh, – I don't worry about any of our guys not realizing that. They know how important it is. I know Jeff has had two in two weeks, um, especially that one yesterday was a big deal. Um, we'll keep watching if it happens. It's something you can't let happen too much. Um, and if it does, regardless of how well you run, you got to make a change. With respect to Seattle, now that you've seen them so recently, uh, what are the challenges that you foresee of going up against them this week? Um, just the same as it is always week. I mean, they're not going to do much different. Um, they're going to play their three deep. They're going to challenge you in man coverage. They're going to try to get off the ball and come after the quarterback every single time. Um, you know, they're in a main eight man front all game anyways, so you know it's always tough angles in the run game. Um, it is always easier to not get them at their place so they can't jump the cadence as well, but um, it'll be the same as it always is, just not quite as loud. Apologize profusely to. Uh, George a couple of times, but wh why? I, I, I should have 27 plays in the second half. Why couldn't you just get him one catch for five yards? Like, what was it? Something the Broncos were doing, or you know, why? Why wasn't that possible? Because um, there's not just all these. Uh, first of all, I wish that we did, <laughs> and I and I definitely feel. I mean, I definitely could have just said, "Hey, my goal in this half is to get George the record." Um, you know, we had a number of plays called to him. Um, you know, one we had a look. He called to him. He got doubled. So you go to the other. You go to the other. You go to Dante on it, and that was good. Um, what fourth play of it? We had a play called, and they got under it in zone coverage. Uh, so um, we threw it away. And then after that, you know, I'm never. I've been. I think you have to think in a very humble way uh, when you call call games, and that's just how I. You don't sit there and try to do. You try to win the game, and you try to do what's right. And then when you get to a certain point, then you can do stuff like that. Um, I'm not at all thinking that coming out on the third quarter. First of all, we have a lot of plays designed to go to them. And when coverages go there, you go somewhere else, which it's smart of them to take their coverages there after what happened in the first half. That's why other people have to make them pay, which you get better opportunities. Um, but we didn't get a lot to George. We didn't stay on the field. We didn't convert one third down. Um, so you're not, you don't have as many opportunities as you do in the first half. Um, thought it would happen naturally throughout the game. And then regardless, you know, if we get the ball with the two score lead at the end, I promise you we won't run it out. We'll call a quick screen to him or something like that um, so we can get the record. You know, unfortunately, we got that ball at the end and it wasn't. It was a one score game. You know, we had to down it on fourth down in a, in a bad way to still give him another play. You know, so it, never, it just didn't play out that way where it's like, hey, let's just do this. I mean, that's every play mattered there at the end. And so you're just trying to call plays to, 
to try to win the game, not to break a record. And that's what you feel bad about. I wish he could have break the, break the record. He deserved to. We had one of those called. It was covered. So, yeah. And then, and if we would have forced it, then he would have lost three yards, and now we'd had to get eight yards instead of five. So it's, but no, you're right. Uh, we we wish we did. The only people that were happy were probably Shannon Sharp and my dad. So. <laughs> You said, uh, I think on, on draft day, you guys said that Contavious Street could play either the uh, three technique or the or the big end spot. Has that, you know, have you honed his position at all since then? Uh, no, because he's not on the practice field at all. We just want him to get as healthy as he can be. We're very excited about him. You know, a lot of that stuff's interchangeable, just like the guys we already have. Um, so we're excited to add him into the mix next year because we felt fortunate to get him. It's tough to wait a year to have to wait for him to play. Um, but we love this college tape, and he's been working his tail off to get healthy, and he'll, I think he'll be um, definitely in the mix next year. Statistically, Nick has had two really impressive games, particularly for, for first-year starter, undrafted guy. What do you make of, I mean, I know you're not super into numbers, and you're more into results, but what do you make of the way he's played these, these last two games? Uh, I mean, Nick plays very, um, I mean, he's shown that he can play quarterback in this league. Um, he did a very good job in this game playing within himself, playing in a tight pocket. Um, he made some really good throws with people around him. Um, the third, the second to last third down that um, really allowed us to finish out there on the field, um, the one that I tried to call a timeout before, he was the best on. You know, he, number one was covered. They jumped the now route, and he went right to number two on Dante, high low in that Mike linebacker. And there was a lot of guys in his face, you know, not on block guys, but there's push in there on third downs, just like there always is, especially if it was that pass rush. And he hung in there and made some good plays. And there was also a couple times I thought he saved a couple sacks. Good. Cool. Good. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks.